All right, we're back at it again today. We're gonna to be making about 75 pounds of link sausage. We're gonna smoke in a smokehouse. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do on it. We got some seasoning. Our seasoning we normally use is the legs. It's uh, probably one of the best sausage seasonings from the factory that I found. We're gonna make about 25 pounds of it with pepper jack. We got our cure salt. Always add a little kosher salt. Um, I've started adding some Uncle Chris's. It's just all around good seasoning. We get a little hotter if we want it with crushed red pepper. We'll taste test for that. And we always keep some sage handy in case it needs a little more sage. Normally these are pretty good. And uh, if it needs a little more sausage seasoning than that, I'll just add a little more. I've got some on the side over here. On our sausage seasoning, we got the Legs 105 Smoked Sausage Seasoning. Um, that's a pretty good seasoning to start off with on your base. We got just regular diced uh, pepper jack cheese. This is not high temp. It's going to melt in there. That's fine. This is our pork. Um, I just started mixing in the fat. I had about 10 pounds of domestic fat that I just got. And uh, this, is, this is some little wild pigs i think there was two that we caught in a trap and and in a sow that i killed during deer season so it is wild pork but we've added domestic fat to it and that'll help it all right there's our pork sausage seasoning this is enough for 50 pounds in this pack it was a little bit bigger pack that i'd got and this is a 25 pound pack so we'll start out with that Looks like a lot of seasoning, but it's not. It'll it'll mix in good. I'll go ahead and mix this up and run it through the grinder, and we'll add our cure salt after the first grind. Then we'll run it back through the second grind, and uh, it's just easier for me to do it that way. We'll add some water to it, too. It's going to be a good bit of water that goes in this. I already know, just from experience, I'm going to want to add a little bit of kosher salt to this. Um, I don't like to use table salt. Table salt's a little strong. So we'll go ahead and add a little kosher salt now. And go ahead and add some red pepper. Because I already know I'm going to want it a little hotter. It's kind of like mine. Mild, but I like just a little bit of kick to it. And I'm going to add some Uncle Chris's to it. This is just good stuff. Got some good seasonings in it. Start using this on our steak seasonings too. All right, we got her mixed up. We're gonna get us a bowl full, go to the grinder, get it all ground the first time. Get it ground up. Y'all look at that right there. Look at the uh, fat content that's coming out of that. Now we're gonna grind this up where to make uh, a little bit tighter where that sausage will pack better. We're gonna grind it again. But if you can see, we're about 50%, maybe 40% fat. So that's a lot less fat content than what you would buy in a store. So yeah, sausage ain't good for us, but this homemade sausage is a whole lot better for you than what's in the store. It's just a lot leaner. Um, and it's still really, really good sausage. You can see it's, it's got a lot of fat. It's going to pack tight in those casings. Like, that's going to be good sausage. It's got plenty of fat. What you're buying in the store, probably 70, 80% fat. And uh, that's just leftovers. We're making the good stuff here. The meat going in there. We ain't fat eaters, we meat eaters. Just gotta have a little bit of fat to make it good. We 
got this Cabela's meat grinder. This is a one and three quarter horse. They've changed the model a little bit now. I think this is a number 48 head, but it does very, very well. And you can see, like that's not even that small of chunks going in there and it just grinds them right on up really fast. About 700 is what we paid for this one, 750. And I think they're about eight now. Not advertising for these guys. That's just a really, really solid meat grinder. Caution, never operate without the tray and tray guard secured in place. Never reach into the grinder. A lot of smaller grinders, you constantly got to take the plunger and cram the meat down in there. Not this one. You just drop it in. It'll take care of the rest. I didn't probably show you real well how we mix the cure soft up for the sausage in some of the other videos. So I'm going to take a little more time on this. Um, you got number one and number two cure salts. They most of the time come listed as to what purpose, but on these cure salts, you're going to mix about five teaspoons per 25 pounds. So we've got right about 70 pounds of sausage to 75 that we're going to make. I don't like mixing quite that much cure salt. And the reason why it just gets a little too salty and we're not hanging this sausage in a smokehouse at um, high outside ambient temperatures for extended periods of time or anything. We're gonna smoke about 24 hours, um, probably below 55 degrees outside when the humidity gets a little bit better. And then we're gonna take it out, vacuum seal it, freeze it. So this isn't gonna be sitting around on a corner or anything like maybe jerky or anything like that. So, or cured ham. So what I got here, is I just put a little bit of water in a bowl. We're gonna add way more water than this to the sausage. This is hot water. And that's just to help dissolve. And instead of 15, I'm gonna put about 11 or 12 of these level teaspoons. It's four, five, 11. Let's go 12 on this. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be good. That's gonna be plenty. Um, pretty good stuff. This also helps cut down on um, botulism, different things that occur um, like above 70 degrees. But like I said, we're not, we're not even gonna have this sausage above 70 degrees at any time. So it, it would be fine either way. But you can see the water turning pink. And instead of dumping this hot water, once this dissolves good, I'm gonna add cold water to this to cool this water down, then I'll dump it in the sausage and mix it in. We're gonna do that before we pull out our 25 pounds for the uh, pepper jack. It's dissolving up pretty good. Now there we got it. You know, I've mixed my cold water now. Checking the temp on it is fine. So I'm gonna pour that in here on my meat. There is a cure salt and water going in. We're getting all the salt, you know, on our taste test before we um, get ready to grind it again and stuff it. Now, I can't tell you exactly how much water to put in this. What I can tell you is it's going to take probably a couple gallons for 50 pounds. Um, you you got to mix it till the meat contents right where it'll stuff in the casing and all easy you know and it won't dry out in the smokehouse nobody likes dry sausage so I don't have the fancy meat mixers so it's just the old ice chest for us alright we're gonna make our sample patties what I like to do is kinda just so we don't uh, get one little bunch of seasoning somewhere, just kind of pick around on it and make make a patty like so. Oakley wants to test it out. She says, "Drop it." Put it right there in the skillet. Cook it. Taste it. See what we got. 
try it and see what it tastes like. I want to make sure the salt's right. Salt tastes pretty good in it. Um, but I also want to make sure the spice is right on it too. Now, typically it's going to get a little bit hotter in the casing than it is in the skillet because you lose some of that heat when you're cooking it. Overall flavor is great. Um, might add just a little bit more red pepper to it. Show y'all this real quick too. This is before we added the pink salt and after we added the pink salt. Now, not only is it pink, it turns a meat pink. Um, if you buy patty sausage in a store and cook it, it normally ends up looking like this. So if you're making just pan sausage, don't add pink salt to it because you're gonna stick it right in a freezer. You're not trying to cure it or anything like that, you know, at low temps for days at a time or anything. Um, so it's fine, you know. Leave it in the freezer if it's wild pork, 14 days, two weeks at least. Um, then make your sausage, cook it well, and you won't have any trouble out of it. I am going to add just a little bit more seasoning. This seasoning is another brand. It's a really high in pepper content. It's like a really hot sausage mix. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of that. It won't hurt it. And I'm trying to use it up anyways. I'm also gonna hit it with a red pepper pretty hard. So I mean it is right at 75 pounds. That's that's gonna be pretty good right there. Like we're gonna roll with that. Even if it's mild, it's gonna be great. We're gonna mix this up and I'm gonna pull 25 pounds out for the pepper jack sausage. All right, we got our 25 pounds out. We got about four and a half pounds of uh, pepper jack here. We're gonna add it to this batch. Um, it's just the same sausage, just adding a pepper jack to it. It's gonna be good stuff. We're gonna add that, mix it up, run it back through the grinder, and it's just gonna be 25 pounds. Actually, it's going to make 30 pounds because we just added close to 5 pounds of pepper jack to it. This is not high temp cheese. Um, this is just regular pepper jack. Got this cubed up at Brookshire's. Um, they sell it. Not sure what grocery stores you got next to you. You can use high temp. That'll be fine. You'll see it in there. It's going to taste the same either way. It's going to melt a little bit in in this sausage and you may not even see it but it's going to taste the same um, no difference there it's just a visual thing so either way it's good stuff matter of fact you're not going to see it because it's going to be ground up if it's going to run this back through the grinder high temp cheese is basically for show i guess the way i look at it cheese is cheese most of ours end up going on a piece of bread or hot dog bun when we eat it anyways. I run through some barbecue sauce. Bring it back through the second time. Some stuff real good. Put that cheese in there. It's some good stuff right there. All right, we got five pound sausage stuffer if i buy another one it's going to be a 20. you just have to reload it too much um we got our casings we run water through them just to get them softened back up a little bit where they'll go on the stuffer pretty easy thread that on there tie me a good tight knot right there in the end of it That normally gets trimmed off anyway, so it's not a big deal. And we can start stuffing it. Kind of hold just a little bit of back pressure on it. Not too much, not enough to bust the casing, but enough to uh, just make sure that that sausage packs tight without air in it. 
you have it nice firm. That's what the water helps with too. It'll help it pack tighter. That's what I was talking about earlier. If, if you don't, it won't slice good. Like if you get that sausage packed tight, it'll slice better after it's smoked. So you can cut it up, put it in soups and gumbos and stuff. Jambalaya, stuff like that. You see a lot of deer sausage, it's dry or kind of coarse or grainy. And uh, pork just typically does better than that. It'll stuff softer than that deer does. That's why it's best with deer sausage. A lot of processors add like 20%. If I'm making deer sausage, I add 30, 35% pork fat to that deer sausage. Or mix a, mix a wild hog with one, makes good sausage. But just like that, that's five pounds. Cut it off. Get all the air out of it. Tie a knot in that end. Good to go. It's five pounds just like that. Danielle and I just did some math on this sausage and uh, it's 30 pounds of pepper jack, right at 60 pounds of regular. So this is right at 90 pounds of sausage. It's about $375 if you went to a processor for that much sausage. That'd be equivalent to having two to three deer made in sausage. Um, yeah, so not knocking processors or anything like that. That's what sausage costs. That's what it costs in a grocery store. I'm just saying if you kill several deer or um, hogs, wild hogs, it definitely pay you to invest in some uh, grinding equipment, some sausage making stuff and some uh, vacuum seal machines. You know, we spent probably $1,000, $1,500 on all that stuff getting it getting it set up but it's it's well paid for itself within two years and we know what goes in our meat we know what goes in our sausage make it a little bit healthier because it's a little bit leaner and uh no hair no dirt none of that good stuff i'm showing you a little more than how to make sausage here today uh i'm showing you how to beat inflation you know uh Inflation 26% 2022. They can say what they want. I've done the math on it. They'll talk about 8 or 10% inflation. That's a bunch of bull. We all know it. We know what the price of fuel and stuff went up to. We know what the price of groceries went up to. You go to the grocery store, you're costing double what, what you were two years ago. Um, but, you know, for the same price, just about... Some things hadn't went up, seasonings hadn't went up a lot. I'm still getting my sausage seasoning for what I was two years ago. So, yeah, I'm beating inflation by, by making my own sausage. Go buy you a pack of sausage um, in a store. Look at the weights on it. You know, they've cut the weights back. Some of the stuff's the same price, but they've cut the weights back by probably 30%, 40%. You know, that's no other way to figure. That's a 30, 40% inflation rate. On, on that pack of sausage. So, yeah. You know, government, they're not in our favor. They want us to, they want us to work, pay our taxes, and then control what we eat and what we put in our mouth. They want to tell us what to feed our kids, that kind of thing. I don't think so. I'm not going to sit here and not deer processors and things like that. Those guys out there making a living. Uh, I just like doing it myself. As far as buying it in the store, I ain't got to worry about what's in my meat, you know. I've worked in factories. I know I've worked in food processing factory before. Worked in a chicken plant for six years. So I know what they do with the meats and things like that. You know, they're fairly clean, but hey, there's no guarantees any day what goes in your food if you buy it in the store. You go out there in the wild and hunt, fish, like we do. Put you some meat in the freezer. You know how it was dressed. You know how long it was on ice. 
you know how long it took you to get it in the freezer and you know how clean it is you also know it's natural it's not fed a bunch of junk in a feed lot somewhere so yeah gonna be the last one for the pepper jack right there You don't want much air in here, so I'm putting it in there like I am and, and packing it in. You want to try to keep that air out of there. It makes it a lot easier to stuff. Alright, this is a regular smoked sausage getting it going. Should have about 55, 60 pounds, maybe a little bit more. We'll just have to see. Got all of our pepper jack um, stuff. Then we're going to put it in the freezer for a few days till the humidity gets a little bit better outside and our temps drops on. Gets down in the 50s for our highs. We'll go ahead and smoke it. That's the one we've been waiting on. This is going to be the last one, I believe. That's the last one for today. We're going to put these in the freezer, smoke them a few days from now when it cools off a little bit outside. It's a pretty good looking sausage. going to look even better than that when we get it out of the smokehouse. That's going to be it for this one. We'll smoke the sausage in the next video. Try to be a little bit more detailed in these videos. So uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already. Um, click the bell, set it to all, and like and share videos. That's going to be it. God's Country Hunting and Fishing, keeping it real.